Hey everyone! If you didn't know, Electrocute got a pretty big change last patch, with its cooldown being reduced from 50 to 25 seconds, but its damage got slightly nerfed. It was supposed to be a nerf in general to the rune, but it actually ended up being a buff to certain champions who can proc it every time it comes off cooldown. Champions like LeBlanc, Syndra, Echo really come to mind. So in this video, we're going to be analyzing how CG Febivin smashes a challenger Z main by abusing the new low cooldown on Electrocute. LeBlanc is an AP ranged assassin, versus Zed a melee ranged assassin. LeBlanc has more range, slightly more wave clear because she is ranged, and they both do equal damage with a full combo. Zed has more sustained damage after they both use their abilities, since he's melee, so LeBlanc will never want to be in range for Zed to auto her. And the last but most important part of the matchup is that Zed uses energy and LeBlanc uses mana. This means that if they both stay in lane trading for a while and LeBlanc can't force Zed out of lane, she will eventually run out of mana and Zed takes control of the lane. Knowing these things, let's create a game plan. Mission 1. Push the wave with autos to create big waves. Since LeBlanc needs to spend mana wisely in this matchup, she doesn't want to use abilities to push the wave. She has the range advantage so she can easily get the push. Mission 2. Harass Zed whenever Electrocute comes up. With Electrocute only having a 25 to 20 second cooldown, every time it's up LeBlanc can easily go in and proc it, giving him a ton of free damage. Mission 3. Continue missions 1 and 2 until Zed is forced to recall or overstay. If LeBlanc plays this matchup right, it's almost impossible for Zed to win nowadays. Zed can't proc Electrocute unless he hits his full WEQ combo, which is really easy to dodge for good players, so Zed will eventually get too low to stay in lane and be forced to recall and lose a ton of CS or straight up die to LeBlanc. Alright, let's move on to the gameplay. At the start of the lane, Febivin is playing really aggressive by starting Q and looking for harass early. I actually really disagree with this choice. LeBlanc used to start Q in melee matchups like this, but ever since they changed it so targeted spells draw minion aggro, it hasn't been worth it. I think he either misclicked it or he was just testing. Especially since LeBlanc level 1 start with W is really strong using the auto W auto combo to proc electrocute. And as we can see, he's taking way more damage than Zed is, which isn't how this matchup is supposed to start. But he's working on mission 1 and autoing some minions now. Look how LeBlanc doesn't even need to auto at the start to get the push since Zed has to actually walk up and grab minions where LeBlanc can stand back and do it whenever she wants. Now a big wave is forming since he's only using auto attacks to push, which is exactly what he wants to transition into mission 2. He hits level 2 and is positioning aggressively like this in case Zed steps up into range of his QW combo. He still makes sure he doesn't lose any CS while doing this though. Now the cannon minion is about to show up, and he walks up and throws a Q at Zed right before the waves meet each other. This is a trick that you can use on any champion to get some free harass without drawing minion aggro. This is because when you take a lot of minion damage, it normally comes from the ranged and cannon creeps. So since they aren't in range of him yet, he's free to throw his Q without them aggroing him. Alright, now he's going to begin mission 2 and start abusing electric Q. Since Zed won't walk in range for him to use Q and then W, he uses W first and uses Q in an auto to proc electrocute. This chunks Zed to about 50% health. It wouldn't be worth it to do this with old electrocute because the cooldown is so long, you get 2 or 3 uses out of it before having to recall, so it was really good at surprising people with the damage it did combined with ignite to get a kill. But since the cooldown and damage are lower now, he wants to use it whenever it comes up to really milk the damage out of it. His abilities are on cooldown now, so he's going to finish pushing the wave in and collect a CS. After the wave is cleared, he sees that the enemy jungler is way overextended trying to take his jungler's red buff. This is a perfect time to roam as he won't miss anything and Zed can't come with the huge wave being pushed into his tower. So he heads down river and Trundle flashes over Dragon Wall. Knowing that Trundle doesn't have flash, lets him use W, E flash, then Q to get him a kill. If Trundle had flash here, he wouldn't have done this because he knows Trundle would just flash away. And yes, you heard it right, LeBlanc can use E to buffer it, then flash, making her chain a lot easier to hit when trying to chase someone because of how slow the chain actually moves. He heads back to lane, and as soon as he gets there, gets back to mission 2 and goes in for a trade. This is a really nice trick on LeBlanc that many players don't use. Good players will always be standing behind minions when going versus LeBlanc to make sure her chain doesn't hit, so when you W in, they will just run around their minions. 
So the trick is to W on top of a low health minion like he does here. So first the minion doesn't block the chain, and second the enemy laner won't dodge it because they are planning on standing in that spot for the minion to block it. Another trick he uses here to get such an insane trade off is that he walks one way and sees Zed step up to use his WEQ combo. He immediately walks the other way, then dashes the perfect angle to the side of Zed and dodges both shurikens. And trust me, this was no accident. Anyways, this trade drops Zed to 30% health and Febvin is basically a fool. I'm not really sure why Zed actually swaps to a shadow afterwards. If he hit his shurikens, LeBlanc would be a lot lower and this could potentially be a kill for him, but I don't know. This was pretty troll by him. He ends up dying for this and uses his flash, so he's pretty screwed when they start laning again. After Zed dies, Febivin is going to recall instead of pushing the wave just like I did in my latest video where I'm playing a Kali vs Zed and let the wave push to deny him a lot more CS than it would if he pushed the wave in. He comes back to lane to a huge wave that he's going to want to clear before playing too aggressive. If he autos or uses Q on Zed, the minions will do so much damage to him. So he uses his minion dematerializer on the cannon and starts last hitting. Then, when Zed uses his W, he does the same trick as before and uses W on top of a few low health minions, killing the one that Zed was hiding behind and lands a full combo on him, procking Electrocute and doing 50% of his health. Now he's just finishing clearing the wave so he can start missions 1 and 2 again. The wave is pushing back the other way again, and as soon as Zed comes back into lane, he jumps in and lands all three of his spells, procking Electrocute and bringing Zed back down to 30% health. And since Zed knows that Febivin is stacking a big wave to push into the tower and eventually dive him and kill him, he's forced to recall here. Febivin notices that Zed recalled so he starts using his abilities to quickly push in the wave. He wants the wave to crash on the tower now so Zed is punished for recalling. He now has three options. Recall, since this is a time where if he recalls he would miss nothing, and you can't always get a perfect recall. Look for a roam, or just stay in lane. Which one do you think he's going to choose and why? He chooses to stay in lane because he has two corrupting potion charges left. Both his top lane and bot lane are recalling, so he can't roam, and he has a huge wave on the tower where he can harass Zed when he's trying to CS it. If he was out of corrupting potion charges, he would have recalled. So while he's waiting for Zed to come back, he's getting some tower damage to potentially get first tower if Zed really messes up. Then when Zed starts to last hit the ranged minions, he looks for some harass. He fakes like he's going to combo him to make Zed use his Q to last hit, then he hits him with Q while out of tower range, then goes in with W and auto to proc electrocute. This brings Zed from 100% health to 30% and he just got back from base. And now it's back to mission 1, pushing in the wave without using abilities. As soon as he hits level 6, he uses his W and R to get some harass on Zed and forces him to use his W to retreat. This is a big deal because Zed's W is his only outplay potential since his flash is down. Without his W, LeBlanc can dive him really easily. Febivin finishes pushing in the wave and now mission 3 is in full effect. Zed needs to recall right now or he dies, so let's see what he does. Febivin walks up and uses Q, W, E and an auto to proc electrocute and get the kill. So now Zed dies and loses this huge wave on tower where if he just recalled he would lose the wave but at least wouldn't give LeBlanc 300 gold. Anyways, this lane is over now so let's move on to the recap. First. Febivin started off the lane kind of poorly by starting Q instead of W and wasn't winning the poke war at all. So he eventually stopped and started pushing the wave and hit level 2 and used a W Q auto combo to chunk Zed to 50% health using his electrocute. He finished pushing in the wave and noticed that the enemy jungler was way overextended trying to take his own jungler's red, so he moved down river and caught him with a W E flash combo to get him his first kill. As soon as he got back to lane, he executed a perfect trade with the trick that we talked about while also dodging Zed's full combo, bringing Zed to 40% health while Febivin was full. Then Zed trolled really hard and swapped to his shadow, looking to keep trading and ended up flashing away and dying. The wave was pushing towards Febivin, so he recalled to deny Zed even more CS. When he got back to lane, the wave was really big so he made sure to clear a few minions before going in, using the same LeBlanc trick to get another really nice trade on Zed. 
Then Zed moved out of vision while his potion healed him up, and when he got back in lane, Febivin chunked him again, forcing Zed to recall while a big wave was pushing into his tower. Febivin quickly pushed in the wave and got some tower damage while waiting for Zed to come back in lane. When Zed got back, he waited for him to go for a last hit, and used Electrocute to chunk him again to 30% health. Then he started pushing in the next wave, and as soon as he hit level 6, he used W and R to harass Zed some more and force him to W away. Zed needed to recall here, but he didn't, so Fepivin finished pushing in the wave and dove Zed, using Electrocute to kill him and making him lose this huge wave, closing the lane out. That's going to be all for this video, see you next time.